The Houthi have launched well over 100 drones and missiles at ships in the region. Despite that, not a single ship has been sunk. In the tanker war in the 1980s, we saw numerous ships sank with relatively primitive anti-ship missiles. Today, these weapons have become widespread and much more capable. The Houthi have a massive stockpile and large variety of anti-ship weapons that they love to show off. But these anti-ship missiles don't seem to be living up to their name. A 1994 US naval thesis paper calculated all scenarios that anti-ship missiles were fired in combat and the probability that they would hit. And the results were pretty incredible. Over 90% against a defenseless target, such as an oil tanker. And from 1982 till the paper was written, nearly 50% against a warship that had the ability to defend itself. So why hasn't the Houthi been able to sink any ships? And I also want to say sorry for the long delay in videos. I had this one almost completed on the 12th, then the US and UK launched strikes, so I wanted to wait and see the results and how it might change the video. Then the next week, last week, my hard drive crashed and I had to wait nearly two days for backups to download. And if you don't want to wait and deal with all the hassle of trying to figure out meals to make, recipes, and what ingredients you need, and grocery shopping, then our sponsor is perfect for you. HelloFresh. They send you foolproof, step-by-step -step recipes, along with all the ingredients you need, right to your house. Winter weather, for a lot of us, is making it an extra hassle to go grocery shopping. Ordering meals from restaurants for delivery can become very costly real quick. And with the new year, make it easy to start eating healthier. All three of these have applied to me recently. Their large selection of meal choices and different ones every week means I can find several healthy meals and recipes that cater to my whole family. And it's true, I've been ordering HelloFresh long before they're ever a sponsor. No wonder they're America's number one meal kit. Go over to the website yourself and check out what they have. Click the link in the description or use my code and get free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. So give them a try. You can just scan the QR code here or click the link down in the description. Again, HelloFresh. So why haven't the Houthi been able to sink any commercial or military ships? Well, the big one now is that there are warships defending against them and shooting them down. Defending against anti-ship missiles is real hard. Despite that, the US and allies, at least reportedly, have been extremely successful doing so. Intel Schizo on Twitter has put together some awesome graphics and keeping a tally of the attacks. At last count, the Houthi have launched some 135 missiles and drones, of which 97 were shot down, or 72%. This is pretty incredible if true, considering many of these weren't even aimed at the warships, but at commercial shipping. The area these attacks have occurred is huge. If you had a warship in the region, armed with even the longest range SM-6 air defense missile, one would still only cover a small portion. And realistically, due to the horizon and the low altitude that drones and cruise missiles fly at, and the extremely fast speed of ballistic missiles, the range would be much, much shorter. You could easily need a dozen or even more to really provide full coverage. So there's just no way to be in position to shoot them all down. Now the US can also shoot down missiles using aircraft, but again the region is just so large it becomes virtually impossible to cover the whole thing 24-7. So why hasn't the Houthi been able to sink any ships? Obviously a lot are shot down, but dozens still got through. Despite all the technology available, the task is still a difficult one. These weapons have pretty long ranges, beyond what you can see visually, so you need a way to find your target. The typical method is radar. The west coast of Yemen is extremely flat, so any radar, unless it's mounted real up high, will only be able to see targets out some 20 to 30 kilometers, and that's due to the horizon. And even before the conflict, ships sailed some 80 to 100 kilometers away from the coast of the Houthi control, as you can see here in this radar satellite image from May of last year. However, about 40 kilometers inland, the terrain becomes extremely mountainous that, if used, could extend the radar's horizon out to 150 kilometers or even further. It also provides many places to hide a radar. Another method used is more high-tech. There are websites that track ships coming and going using the Automatic Identification System, or AIS, as well as other methods. But this data might be slightly delayed, enough to cause a miss, or a ship could even turn it off. Likely, the best method for the Houthi lately has been with drones. Sending out small drones to scout and locate ships and then report back their position. So, assuming that they are able to detect a target and want to attack it, there are a few different weapons they can use. The big one is anti-ship ballistic missiles. The Houthi now are the first ones ever to use this type of weapon in conflict. But they have many problems. 
Although ballistic missiles fly extremely fast, several times faster than normal cruise missiles, they can still take a while to reach their target. And that's because a lot of their speed is vertical speed as it climbs up and then descends in altitude. In fact, in extreme cases, a subsonic cruise missile could actually beat a ballistic missile. For example, North Korea's ICBM test in November 2022 reached an altitude of over 6,000 kilometers, but only flew 1,000 kilometers in range. And the total flight time was one hour and nine minutes. A subsonic cruise missile, like Tomahawk, flying at Mach 0.8, or 1,000 km per hour, would obviously reach a distance of 1,000 km 9 minutes faster, in one hour. That again though is an extreme case, but it does show that ballistic missiles don't reach their targets necessarily as quick as people might assume when they hear how fast they fly. Another weird thing is, contrary to what you might think, for a given missile, the shorter the range to a target, the longer it would take to reach it. These Houthi ballistic missiles are, as far as we know, solid fuel, which cannot really be shut off easily. So to shorten its range, it has to expend that extra energy by flying up higher. But all that to say, these anti-ship ballistic missiles fired by the Houthi would likely take five to eight minutes to reach their target. That doesn't sound very long, but assuming it takes a couple minutes to load coordinates into the missile, ready it, and fire, a commercial ship traveling at 15 knots would be four or five kilometers away from where it originally was. The Houthi can obviously take that into account and fire at a point where it will be, but the shipping channel does have many twists due to the islands there, and also they could change course or speed up if notified by the US or others quickly enough and potentially turn 4 or 5 kilometers into 8 to 10 kilometers. Which brings up how these anti-ship ballistic missiles actually guide themselves and have the ability to maneuver to hit a target. After all, these ships are not just sitting still, they're moving targets, and pretty small ones at that with a beam, or width, just a few dozen meters. Iran has showed off the ability of its anti-ship ballistic missiles to hit a target at sea, but here it wasn't moving, and there's no way to know how many previous attempts missed. Obviously Iran is not going to release any footage showing their misses. No country would. From what we know, including videos released by Iran, and from the appearances of these missiles at parades, they are mostly either infrared or electro-optical guided in their terminal phase, which is when it starts searching for a target once they're close enough and make any maneuvers and adjustments to hit it. They're not radar guided like the larger and more sophisticated Chinese DF-21D. In general, with EO and IR there's more clutter, meaning shorter detection range. Shorter detection range means less time to maneuver to hit the target, so if the sensor can only detect some 20 kilometers away and it's flying at Mach 4, it has less than 15 seconds. So it's not very surprising these anti-ship ballistic missiles miss so often. The inherent difficulty in targeting and hitting a moving target, the limited sensor range and time to make adjustments, along with the missile, the warhead, the sensor, and control surface reliability. And we seem to have just seen these problems with reliability firsthand in a recent video. This anti-ship ballistic missile was able to successfully hit its target, but apparently detonated but still passed straight through the other side without doing very much damage. But what about normal anti-ship missiles? In the past they've proven to be real reliable. During the tanker wars, roughly half of all attacks on commercial shipping were carried out by anti-ship missiles. In total, some 400 commercial vessels were attacked, 31 of which sunk, and another 50 declared total losses from the damage. But these missiles have problems too. Typically their guidance method is pretty simple. Once you know the location of your target, you estimate where it's going to be once your missile arrives based on the ship's speed, your missile speed, and range. You then launch your missile in that direction for a specific range, at which point its onboard radar will turn on and it keeps flying until the radar finds something or it just runs out of fuel. And these onboard radars typically don't have much range as they have to be small enough to fit in the missile. So if you're off by just a little bit, you can see how they could easily miss. Also, they tend to have smaller warheads and kinetic energy. Again, that 1994 paper analyzed how many anti-ship missile hits it took to damage and to sink a ship. As you can see, it increases with the displacement, or the size of the ship. The problem though is there's really not a large enough sample size of larger ships to establish a clear correlation. But you can see, unless it's a tiny, tiny ship, one hit is not going to sink it. For larger, destroyer sized ships, it was roughly two successful hits to put it out of action, and then four hits to sink it. And with cargo and oil tankers, which are several times larger, it could be double that or even more. And some anti-ship missiles are designed more for disabling the ship instead of trying to sink it. Disabling a warship is often just as effective, as you take it out of action and it's going to be months before it can be repaired. And they also require less hits, as we saw. To sink a ship, it typically requires hitting closer to the waterline to allow flooding. But even then, ships' hulls are built with watertight compartments to prevent sinking from flooding. 
So, with all this in mind, it's pretty difficult for the Houthi to successfully sink a ship. Unless they happen to get an extremely lucky hit, they need to start launching large-scale attacks with many missiles to do so. 